Thank you all for being here today. And if you weren't with us yesterday afternoon, we, we were able to honor all of our Young FCN Award winners and our chapters in FCA that have amazing Young FCN Award programs. And I wanted to thank Tim Martin and Pat Harrington for very much for helping us to set up that event, and Sarah Fischetti and Susan Emmert for making that event possible. So thank you very much for helping us yesterday. And then making this event possible again today. Once again, we have a packed program, and we are glad we are able to bring you this FCO Women's Event here in Hall A. We will kick off the event with very special keynote presentation by Brigadier General Lorna Mollock, United States Marine Corps, Director, Information, C4 Division, Deputy Commandant for Information. Following, we, this will be a presentation of this year's Women's Appreciation Awards, and we will conclude with drinks and appetizers for a networking session in the back of this room for the ending of the event. I would now like to invite to the stage Lieutenant General Robert M. Shea, United States Marine Corps retired, President and Chief Executive Officer of FCA International to, to make a few comments. Well, it's great to see everybody here today. Uh, to our sponsors, I want to thank you, and I want to thank everybody who's taken the time to come here, because this truly is a significant event, and it's one of the things that I put a lot of focus on here at FCA. Um, we know the challenge that we're in, we're all in from a global uh, challenge perspective, particularly as you look at peer competitors, near peer competitors, but more than that, this is about giving people a fair chance and making sure that they have opportunity to do the things that everybody else has to do. Um, if you were here yesterday, I think Tina kind of talked about it, but if you were here yesterday and you saw the awards that were given, um, it brings a, a smile to your face and a warm place in your heart when you look around and see all the women that were given awards uh, on, the, on the stage yesterday. And that's exactly what we want to be able to do and be able to say that we are promoting all levels of diversity. I don't care what color you are, what your religion is, where you came from, what your race is, or excuse me, what your gender is. This is an all-encompassing organization and we want to lift all boats. So I just want to thank everybody for being here today. And again, I want to thank our sponsors, Walker Associates in Siena, who've been great partners with us, the returning platinum sponsors, and you're our sponsor of women in AFCA events. And we do much more than just an event here in promoting women. This particular event obviously is focused at the women. Centec Global, a first time sponsor. We also have an award winner from their company, which makes it a little bit special. Cynthia Pacheco, where's Cynthia? I know you're out here someplace, right? Yeah, I thought, okay. I thought I'd get an aloha or something out of you. Cynth okay. Cynthia has sponsored all seven annual women's awards. And so Cynthia, a special thank you to you and all the great support you've provided over the years. And I want to give a special thanks to General Malak for taking time to, to come here. There's a lot of things that you could be doing. You've been a great supporter across the years and uh, what a great role model you are. So thank you for being here and you're gonna hear from here, from her, from her in just a little bit. Uh, Women's Appreciation Award winners, we're looking forward to honoring all four Women's Appreciation Award winners today here, uh, as uh, Tina mentioned before. Um, they'll include, and she also mentioned the drinks, right? I'm, I'm sure she did. I would now like to invite, uh, excuse me, I, I would now uh, greatly appreciate uh, the fact that uh, if you're looking forward to honoring all women appreciation, well, we're looking forward to honoring all those women here today. And a special thanks goes to the women in AFCA who organize this event each year at West. And the co-chair of the women's event in AFCA, Ashley Becker, is Ashley here? No, okay, Ashley's not here. Okay, I said she couldn't be here, but she's up in New York, and, uh, but their co-chair, Stephanie Hutch, is here, and I know Stephanie's here. I saw Stephanie, there she is, all the way from Hopkinton, Massachusetts, uh, is, is here to, and a recipient of the Women's Appreciation Award. So with that, um, our platinum sponsor this afternoon, again, as I said, our Walker and Associates in a conjunction with, uh, with Sienna. So, I'd like to now invite Alan Assay, the Federal Business Development Program Capture at Siena, to say a few remarks and introduce our keynote speaker.
Thank you, sir. So Siena Government Solutions, in conjunction with our great partner, Walker & Associates, is proud to be here for the second time to uh, sponsor today's event as Platinum Sponsors. It's now my great pleasure to introduce Brigadier General Lorna Malak, United States Marine Corps, our keynote speaker today. And I'd like to invite her to start to walk up to the stage, please. Brigadier General Malak is Director, Information C4 Division, Deputy Commandant for Information at the United States Marine Corps. She previously served as Deputy Director, Headquarter Marine Corps Plans, Policies, and Operations, and Commanding Officer, Marine Air Group, Marine Air Control Group 18, Okinawa, Japan. General Malak has commanded at various levels globally and in combat, including during Operation Southern Watch, Iraqi Freedom 1, Iraqi Freedom 2, and Iraqi Freedom 8. Brigadier General Malak holds three master's degrees in education and national security and strategic studies, and a master's certificate in information operations. She is also a graduate of the United Kingdom Defense College Higher Command and Staff. General Malak's personal awards include the Legion of Merit, the Defense Meritorious Service Medal, the Meritorious Service Medal, the Joint Service Commendation Medal, the Joint Service Achievement Medal, the Navy and Marine Corps Commendation Medal, Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal, and the Good Conduct Medal. Please join me in giving a very, very warm welcome to Brigadier General Malak. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, introduction. Well, good evening, Lieutenant General Shea. Susan and the women of the AFSIA team, thank you for the work you do in putting this great event together annually with our industry partners to help us think broadly about our challenges and see the opportunities by bringing together this diverse group who view the space differently than we do from inside our own DOD paradigm. And so you'll, you're going to have to help us solve some of the, for some of these wicked challenges as we, that we're trying to get after in the department as we leverage technology to increase lethality to fight and win our nation's battle. Because at the end of the day, make no bones about it, it's about winning in great power competition. It's a race for first place and the fight is on. I'd also like to say congratulations tonight to the awardees, Jane Brightwell from Walker & Associate, Jackie Shard from the UK National Cybersecurity Center, and Jennifer Greenwell from Centec Global, Stephanie Hutch from P3I, Inc. Leaders in telecom, cyber, cybersecurity, uh, and, an, and a woman-owned innovation company. And as I research these awardees, I couldn't stop this song playing in my head. And it's Beyonce. And it goes, who runs the world? These girls, right? They're that good. They're titans. I call them leaders in their own right. They're fierce, they're fearsome, and they're fearless. And you already did what I was going to ask you to do, was to give them a round of applause, so thank you. I'd like to begin by saying it's a privilege to spend time with you today and the opportunity to have a conversation. And someone close to me, really close, like 35 years close and counting, Mr. Malak, actually, told me that the most precious gift that you can give someone is the gift of your time. And so I want to thank you for sharing your time with me because I'll say that, you know, as a mother of three, two kids in their 20s and one that's a six-year-old, I can't get them to give me five minutes. So the fact that you're giving me 20, um, I'm, I'm much, much grateful for your time. Uh, and I promise, um, they told me 30, I'm giving myself 20, we're probably not going to take that long, I promise. In my opinion, it's a great time to be a Marine and a great time to be an American. And I've had a tremendous opportunity to lead and serve with some of the finest men and women in war and peace. And in my opinion, I consider we've been given a great gift, a great largesse in the opportunity to serve with us men, women, soldiers, sailors of our nation. And I'm pretty fired up about that. And so 
I said we were going to be short. So what's on your mind? I've nothing to be, I've nothing prepared, so I intend to have you ask the question. What do you want to hear? Okay, just kidding. <laughs> but I thought really long and hard about what we would talk, what would I talk about to this august body about uh, this evening? What conversation is worthy of sharing with this impressive group of diverse audience, including our industry partner, particularly the titans, the current titans and the future titans and the men and women with who we serve? Should we talk about the work that we're doing now in the information space about how we need to make that seismic shift to enable the Marine Air Ground Task Force to answer the call as a part of the naval fleet to fight inside the first and second island chain or generate that deploying combat power that we need to push globally at a moment's notice to answer the call, not if it comes, but when it comes. Because everything is about the work with, that we need to do now to prepare to fight and win. So should we talk about that? I think that's been covered quite adequately this week. And so by, far, by those um, far more qualified than me, I mean I, who else has an issue with this I, me thing? I mean, I, but, but, but in case you miss what we talked about this week, get your pen out and paper, and I'm gonna give you the cheat sheet. So all you need to remember is, Network modernization, great power competition, China, Russia, cyber is hard, data is harder, Huawei, Huawei is eating our lunch, 5G, AI, information warfare, battle of signatures, strong military partnered with industry partner, it's all about winning, and there you have it. I bet if you knew that, you would have left yesterday, <laughs> and you wouldn't be here forced to listen to me talk today. But, okay, so, I won't be covering with that. Do I have your permission to move on? All right. So what should the conversation be about? You know, um, I, I think the conversation should be about the challenges and the opportunity in the context of all those things that we've talked about, given the technology accelerations. The future is arriving faster than we think. And the possibilities and opportunities are endless at each end of the spectrum to do good and to do evil. And as we think about the global landscape we operate in and the competition between the United States, China, Russia, Korea, Iran, Mexico, Brexit, Europe, then layer on commerce, technology, bioengineering, religion, scarcity of natural resources, and the coronavirus, to name a few then we see that the, the environment that we are operating in right now has a level of complexity that heretofore has been unknown by the workforce that we have. And the, the next generation cannot fathom the challenges as we think about the integration of these complexity that they will have. And so some like Professor uh, Klaus Schwab uh, from the World Economic Forum, in his book, The Fourth Industrial Revolution, argues that technology accelerations and the convergence, these convergence, will change who we are as individuals and our belief system. But I'll tell you, as a naval force and in my own service, the Marine Corps, we have no problems with identity. Let me just say for the record, as Marines and leaders of Marines, we know who we are and what we must do to be worthy of the title Marines and the honor of serving our nation and its people. And I'm so, I'm proud to be a member of an organization who's also committed to change and leveraging the diverse talent to protect and defend the freedom that we all hold dear. As the nation's 911 force, we're known as the few, the proud, the Marines. Sounds cheesy, right? But it's who we are. It is that simple. Our motto is simplified. It's always faithful. Our core values are honor, courage, and commitment. You've heard us call no better friend, no worse enemy, right? We take people from all walks of life, no matter what race, color, creed, no matter who they are, where they come from. We transform them and we make them Marines. And you can't describe it unless you've, been, you've done it. It's an organization that enables ordinary people to do extraordinary things. We imbibe in our Marine this idea of selfless service, right? That 
that everybody can do the extraordinary, that's about being a part of a team, that it's about winning, it's about doing the impossible, it's about being innovative, it's about creating opportunities for others, but more importantly, it's about trust. Trust in that shared value system and a belief so strong, a system that's so strong that when it really matters, when, whether the bullets are flying overhead or we're conducting uh, humanitarian assistance at home or abroad, defending our networks in cyberspace or providing that sense of family you never had. We function as an organism. When it matters, we have the watch, we have your back, and the battle is on. And so imagine the 17-year-old immigrant from a third world country with less than four months under a belt in the United States finding myself at boot camp in Paris Island, South Carolina, for over three months of the most grueling training of my young life. And there are times in that, you know, those months when that Harry Belafonte song kept coming to my head and I'd go, Deo, daylight come, I'm gonna want to go home. And, and, and I'll tell you what, Marines don't quit, right? And I fought my personal internal battles and for three months they broke us down and they built us back up with the leadership lessons, 14 traits and principles and the associated acronym, every, every Marine here know it, JJ did tile buckle. If you're in the military, there's an acronym, we've got one, right? Justice, judgment, dependability, initiative, decisiveness, tact, loyalty, uh, enthusiasm, bearing, unselfishness, courage, lo uh, knowledge, loyalty, and endurance. And we learned 11 tra uh, leadership traits and principles but most important of these are know yourself, seek self-improvement, know your job, be technical proficient, know your people, look out for their well-being, train your team, set the example, seek responsibility, take responsibility, and lead. From day one, we were tra trained to lead. Lead among your peers, lead leaders create culture, leaders create climate, leaders protect and defend, leaders take a stand, leaders create and embrace the warrior ethos, leaders eat last. And I must tell you, as a person of Caribbean descent with a whole culture around food, I had a problem with that for a little bit. But I learned, right? Uh, leaders build team, it's about the team, it's about the family team, it's about the work team, it's about the community team. That one can be ordinary, but truly be extraordinary or do the extraordinary with the help of a strong team, with, which includes our male leaders when their battles to be won. So this idea of battles won keeps resonating with me, right? And as the Department of Defense, in my opinion, we're working through what, how we define uh, in this new information environment battle space, our understanding of, you know, what is lethality? What is hard power? How do you understand hard power? How do you deliver hard and kinetic power in the, co in the cognitive and logical domains? But history is replete of battles won, not on the traditional battlefield. And this is about men and women who saw not only the problem and challenges, but the opportunities uh, in them. And as an immigrant, I'm reminded that I take too much for granted, like the right to vote. And I was watching the news last night, and I saw that we were celebrating, again, a reminder, 100 years of women's suffrage. And I'm reminded of how far we have come, and we should not take that basic right to vote for granted. I'm also reminded that the battle to be fought uh, are not always on the battlefield. And over 100 years ago, Susan B. Anthony began a battle at the age of 17, which would shape the 19th Amendment of the Constitution because there was a battle. And with the help of a strong team of men like Frederick Douglass and William Lloyd Garrison, she said, organize, agitate, educate, must be our war cry. And she fought battles and won for all of us. And so, show of hands, how many of you have heard of Harriet Tubman? That's goodness, right? And so, she used, um, so my daughter, quick story, right? Really quick diversion. My daughter, uh, when she was 10 years old, she was just really fascinated by this book by, Her uh, by Harriet Tubman. And she used to be extremely frustrated by her younger brother, who's uh, two years younger than she is. And, and um, 
I mean, she would like, she would always speak for him, right? And I remember one day I came home from work and uh, he was four years old at the time and he had this great story to tell me and he would take, and all his stories would have like, and then, and then, and so a two minute story would take 10 minutes and she was, I mean, she just, you know, she just got fed up of him, you know, taking his end thens and, and she just told the story in like a minute and he was so disappointed. He was like, I wanted to say that. And so my husband turned to her, him and said, it's okay, little buddy. You're gonna have to get used to it. A lifetime of that, right? So, so my last week though, my daughter called and she goes, mom, have you seen the movie Harriet Tubman? And I hadn't. And so on Sunday, I watched the movie. And, and Harriet Tubman was barely five foot tall, but she was an arm scout and a spy for the Union Army during the Civil War when no one believed that she should or she could, but she didn't do it alone. Her team included men like Frederick Douglass and John Brown, and her message was simple. Sometimes change is dismantling the old and it's building the new, and that has implications for us all. Change is hard, right? And the battle for us is the change that we must make now to get better, to leverage the technology and the diverse talent that we have to win because it's all about winning. And Susan B. Anthony and Tubman illustrated that ordinary people can do extraordinary things when they're a part of a great team and change the world for others. Across the globe, women as part of strong organizational teams, which include our, me our men, answer the call to serve this great nation and our militaries, our business, our communities, and our families, because there's still many battles to be won, and that, my friends, will never change. And so the future operating environment in which we fight, job one will be recruiting and retaining the best talent to fight and win against the multiplicity of threats that we face in all domains, air, land, sea, space, cyber, competition against great power, and so the dis discussion about women in the armed forces or leadership positions or whatever, it's, about, it's a discussion about building great teams. It's about increasing lethality. It's about winning wars. It's about having the right instrument and the tool and the toolkit to win on the battlefield or in the boardroom. That's the discussion we need to be having. And so for the Marine Corps, having great kit is really, really important for us in the next fight. But we, as a service, believe the asymmetric advantage will come from having a force that comes from all walks of life, gender, color, and creed, to think differently about, the diverse, about solving the diverse problem sets at the tactical, operational, and strategic level, and that will be critical for us in the future fight. And women have a critical role to play there. We have, we've come a long way but there are still a lot of great opportunities to get better. And our Commandant of the Marine Corps has said that the Marine Corps is a people force. And we're in the process of redesigning the force based on the priorities of war fighting, education, training, core values, command, and leadership. And so in closing, what does battles won mean for me? It's the day on, stay on work that we need to do as Marines. The work we do every day, every minute, to stay true to the leadership traits and principles, given that we are human and we fail at times, to keep our honor clean. It's the training we do every day to ensure that we're ready when the nation's least ready. It's the work we must do daily to be there to take care of our fellow brothers and sisters in arms. It's the work we do to lead our community, our nation. It's the work we do as mothers, sisters, wives, and spouses. It's the work we do to protect our nation at home and abroad. It's the mentorship that we do to build the next generation of leaders. It's the adversity we face and the battles we win every day that makes us lethal physically and mentally. It's, it necessitates fundamentally dismantling the old and building new in the information environment we are finding. To win, we are outliers. Remember, we're outliers, innovators, disruptors, leaders, and titans. Remember, 
I'm a Marine, so we're always looking for a few good men and women. If you aren't already here, you too could be one of us. Thank you. God bless and simplify. Thank you so much, General Malak, for those inspiring remarks. And as a token of appreciation, we'd like to present with you with a small gift, and we hope you enjoyed reading the book, Broadband. It's about a strong role women have played during every important wave in technology and how they made the internet in it is into the force it is today. So how about another round of applause for General Malak? Yeah, we'll just have you put the bag there, and we're going to keep going. We gave the gift, but then I took it back just for a few minutes while we present some awards. So if I could please invite back to the stage Lieutenant General Shea, Chairman, excuse me, President and Chief Executive Officer of FCA International. I would now like to extend a very warm welcome to our award winners, their families and friends, and our distinguished guests. We are so glad you took the time from your activities here at West to join us. This is the seventh year FCA has presented its Women Appreciation Awards, and once again, we had an excellent slate of candidates to choose from. Indeed, to be nominated for, nominated for this award is an honor in itself. This award is for FCA members, both women and men, who have gone above and beyond to further the careers of women. This includes supporting women's work endeavors, mentoring women, promoting STEM scholarships, advocating on the behalf of women for promotion, and actively developing shared opportunities for women in the workplace. This year, I am pleased to say that all four of our award winners were able to make the trip to San Diego to accept their award. First, we will honor Jane Brightwell, Vice President at Walker & Associates. Jane has supported women's initiatives and growth throughout her professional life. She is a founding member of Women in FCA, and her walk at work at Walker & Associates has brought them to become a sponsor to all for four of our annual events, which include this year's annual Women's Appreciation Event. Plus, they sponsor technical panels, meet the panelists' receptions at TechNet Cyber, TechNet Augusta, and TechNet Indo-Pacific. Jane has also played a large role in revitalizing FCA's Diversity Award. Throughout her career, Jane has mentored many women, military and civilian personnel. She has been an outspoken voice of women's issues for the advancement of women, and she has sponsored and successfully advocated for women. She is consistently promoting the contributions of women within Walker & Associates, FCA, her customer base, and other organizations. You will agree that Jane Brightwell is a most deserved winner of the FCA Women's Appreciation Award. We'd like to invite you to say a few words, Jane. Oh, no, we need the microphone. Thank you for the opportunity to work with this group of FCA young women and all of the vendors that have been here to support us with this particular initiative. Seven years has gone by very fast. I'm very pleased that Tina and the group have really grown the women and other diverse members of FCA membership. I encourage all folks, no matter woman, uh, diversity, to get involved. FCA gives you the opportunity to show your leadership, your aptitude. It really gives you a chance to be involved and further your business. So I encourage you to get involved at a chapter level, and you too can be up here. <laughs> Thank you. So I head up membership for FCA, and that just makes my job really easy when Jane goes around and says things like that. So our next recipient is Jackie Chard, Deputy Director for Defense and National Security at the UK National Cyber Center. Jackie is a passionate advocate and practitioner who encourages women in intelligence, cyber, cryptography, and engineering roles. 
She's instrumental in running the first UK cyber conference. Her post-event feedback led the director of National Security Cybersecurity Center to actively encourage and help more women to enter and be successful in this arena. NCSC now routinely runs events for girls in school. As president of FCA's London chapter, Jackie has expanded the attendance at events focused on women and reduced the average age of attendees at her events by 15 years. Several senior women in the field of cyberspace attribute their success to the motivation, support, and encouragement given by Jackie through motivational talks across the UK industry and schools. More opportunities for STEM qualified women in NCSC of other government departments and in defense industries exist thanks to Jackie's vision and passion. For all of these reasons and more, Jackie Chard is most deserving of the FCA Women's Appreciation Award. Thank you so much. So as you can tell, I'm not from around here. Um, so I'm incredibly proud to have been nominated by the UK, but particularly humbled to be a winner amongst these wonderful women that you're hearing about um, here today. So I do really want to thank AFSIA, um, industry partners, military and government colleagues, because without all of your help and efforts, there wouldn't be the work to promote the um, careers of women and help us um, through the journey. So from the National Cybersecurity Centre, I'm really, really passionate about this. Only 11% of the workforce in cyber are female. And so there's so much to do to make more opportunities for the women to join the community. And as we've heard here at this conference, it's a very contested and difficult environment. There's very much to do. So bringing more minds to the table is incredibly welcome alongside the wonderful workforce that we already have. So I've been really lucky to get loads of great support, particularly from some wonderful leaders and male mentors, and that's incredibly welcome, and we thank you for that, and we hope that you'll continue to help on this mission with women as we increase the workforce. Um, there's someone else I need to thank, and that's my husband for putting up with all the efforts he's here today, and my AFSIA bug that I seem to have caught from you all, and um, there's so much more to do. So nobody ever told me I couldn't do this, so I did, and now I need to convince many others. Thanks. So Martin, can we have you come up here as well? We're going to get a picture with both of you up here because Sorry. we understand that every hour she spends with FC is an hour she could be spending at home or doing something else. So we certainly want to get him in the picture as well. So just give us a moment while we have a, the, the Christmas card for next year being taken. <laughs> This was unscripted, if you couldn't tell. Let's give another round of applause for Jackie and for Martin. Thanks. Our next Women's Appreciation Award winner is Jennifer Greenwell, Contract Program Manager at Centec Global. Jennifer is a huge champion of women in her workplace, advocating to hire high-performing women in the defense industry who receive numerous accolades. She is a leader in the Centec Global Mentorship Program, where she uses her platform to actively share her knowledge and expertise to advance women's junior team members with mem mentorship and support and to advise them on the local professional development courses. Jennifer works tirelessly to provide opportunities and encourage her team to pursue professional certifications and learn through continuing education. Within FCA and her community, Jennifer volunteers with Junior Achievement of South Carolina to lead STEM-focused classes and supports the South Carolina Low Country Education Foundation through fundraising opportunities. We are delighted to present Jennifer with the Women's Appreciation Award today. Please join me in congratulating Jennifer.
Good afternoon. Um, thank you, FCA, for this award. I'm humbled to be in the company of the other winners. They are some phenomenal women. I accept this in honor of my grandmothers, Violet, Lizzie, my mother, Pat, and my daughter, Lily. I faced many challenges in my career, too many to mention in the time given. One thing I'd like to share is that I'm on this stage this afternoon 100% because of my support system. Men, women need your support, and women, we need to do better supporting one another. To the women in the room who are still looking for that support system, struggling to find it, look to the women in AFSIA. We have your back. It wasn't until recent years, sorry. It wasn't until recent years that I found a really strong support system in Charleston. There's no group of women more genuine than my Yak family. Kristen Smith, Valerie Warnock, Laura Marion Sheltra, Kelly McCormick, and Maggie Malpass. These women advocate for each other and all women. In them, I see the kind of leader I want my daughter to be, a champion for all, but especially those who are disadvantaged due to circumstances beyond their control. So ladies, I share this award with you. I'd be remiss if I didn't nod to the other chapter members that we have here from the Low Country representing. They are a part of that support system. We could not do this without you. I challenge everyone in the room to do better now in supporting women for the young women who will one day soon walk among us here. Thank you. So there's a family you're born into, there's a family you choose to marry, and there's a family that you bring in as your tribe. So we're gonna draw the family picture. Come on up, let's go quick. We got one more award to do, but she mentioned family. So we're gonna do another Christmas card picture. FCA truly is a family, and you'll hear more about that with our next award recipient. There we go. Outstanding. How about another round of applause for Jennifer? Our fourth and last recipient is Stephanie Hutch, Vice President at P3I Incorporated. Stephanie has worked enthusiastically and tirelessly to advance women in their careers and is extremely active in AFSIA, both at the chapter and international level. A past women's outreach leader at the Lexington Concord chapter, Stephanie has also headed the Women Outreach Leader Network and is now co-chair of Women in AFSIA. At the local level, Stephanie has developed a diverse chapter officer slate, connected young women with mentors, created a women in STEM panel of technical senior leaders, is developing a strong relationship with other local defense organizations to grow leadership opportunities for women, and is spearheading a panel on diversity and inclusion for her chapter's annual New Horizons event last week. So Stephanie, and the crowd, if you would please join me in congratulating Stephanie on being one of this year's Women's Appreciation winners. Thank you. I feel so privileged to have the opportunity to contribute to Women in FCO. And I want to thank Ashley Becker and Susan Emmert for all of their hard work, support, and commitment. And I'd also like to thank FCA International Leadership for making Women in FCA a priority. At this time, I wish to honor Ms. Kathleen Bergansky from the Central Maryland chapter, who tragically passed away suddenly on February 11th of this year. Kathleen made many great contributions to AFSIA in general and to women in AFSIA, and was a Women's Appreciation Award winner in 2018. 
So please join me now in a moment of silence to honor her. Thank you. Next, I want to take a moment to thank my mom, one of my greatest mentors and role models. She served as a Marine Corps officer for nearly 20 years after joining in 1975. Her primary duty, or MOS, was 7210 Air Defense Control Officer. And because she was a woman in the 1970s, she was given the collateral duty of being the admin officer. And I will always remember her telling me that her mindset was, fine, if they're going to make me the admin officer, then I'm going to be the best damn admin officer they've ever seen. And she was. She had a great, <laughs> she had a great career in the military, and she is so proud to have been the first woman air defense controller ever in the Marine Corps. Since retiring from the Marines, she's run a successful small business, continuing to support the defense community as an industry partner. And I'm really excited about the great initiatives that we have coming up for women in FCA in 2020 and beyond. And I want to leave you with a Marine Corps slogan that my mom says to me all the time, which is improvise, adapt, and overcome. And I love this because it's a reminder that there is no situation that is permanent and there are no obstacles that are insurmountable. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. And thank you, General Mollock and General Shea for helping us to present those awards. Please join me one last time in congratulating all of the award winners. These women honored today are just some of those forging the way ahead for women in FCA, and we look forward to celebrating many more of these success stories in years to come. To close out our recognition ceremony today, I hope we have shown you that FCA is an inclusive organization where all are welcome to engage, both to support the mission of the armed forces and to personally and professionally develop their leadership and networking skills. I trust you will have the opportunity to attend one of our Women in FCA panels and receptions taking place at major FCA international shows throughout the U.S. in 2020. This year, Women in FCA is holding its first Women in the Workforce event. It will be held in Tyson's Corner, Virginia on September 2nd, and the theme is A Journey in STEM. That event is aimed to early to mid-career women, and it will discuss the challenges and experiences of women working in STEM fields, and I hope you'll be able to enjoy it, to join us there. If you'd like more information on that, please see Susan Emmert. And speaking of Susan, this event takes a lot of work, and it looks seamless in that way because of Susan Emmert. So if you could all please join me in thanking Susan Emmert for making this possible. Thank you.